So there's this kind of notion um, with swords and cutting things in general that in order to make an effective cut, you have to have this big massive cut that can cut through skin and bone and muscle and everything. And this kind of idea, um, I, I think personally that comes from the culture of like test cutting and like cutting mats and things like that. Probably movies. Movies as well. Because movies um, portray swords as being yeah. big and heavy and strong. Big, heavy, strong and, and, and slow. They, and they, I mean, you can cut very hard with a yeah, long sword if you, you want, you but can. you don't have to. But the, the thing about that, and, and the difference between a test cut, where you have to cut through the whole mat or the whole whatever, and an actual, um, what would have been a fight, is that there's no need to overkill. You know, dead is dead, and disabled is disabled. So sure. if I'm here and I'm attacking Matt, mm -hmm. and I'm able to land a decent blow to his hand, then, sorry, that's a lot. No, you're he's, hurt. he's not going to be able to use that anymore, even if it's a cut that's about like this. And that's actually fairly powerful because of the leverage I have here. This kind of cut, boom, it might not seem very big because there's not a lot of movement, but the, the forward motion combined with the, the twisting motion here actually delivers a good amount of force. Will it cut through his hand? Probably not. But if you cut part way through my wrist, even a little bit, I I might let go with this hand, or if you were to especially, especially land, especially anywhere cut, in here. And we're talking when we're doing stuff with these swords. What we're showing is uh, clothed fighting. Yeah, blouse blau fighting. Right, with blouse fighting, which means the yeah, they call it. It's, it's just means shirt, shirt fencing yeah. or like not in armor. Right. So this this is a lightweight. Um, this jacket. Is heavy for clothes. I mean, it's heavy for clothes, and it's to protect us. Sure. But even something like this, even leather, even leather, this is going to yeah. go through um, with a cut like that. Yeah. Um, so the idea that you have to massively overpower your cut to, to be able to win a fight sure. is just kind of this thing we get from fantasy and stuff. There, even if you look at the manuals and stuff, there are a lot of depictions of people having a sword stuck in them, but not all the way clean through them. There's one or two images of somebody being totally beheaded, but usually it's a cut to tendons or to the neck or something like that. There were, the yeah, the head. There's not a lot of people out there just lopping off body parts. Does it happen? Sure, but you're so vulnerable when you're overpowering your attack like that. Let me give you an example. So if I'm here and I'm gonna put enough power into something to actually lop it off, I am gonna have to get some extra movement here. And then I'm going to have to throw this in. And if I'm doing it with enough force, if he moves because he sees where it's going, and it's, I'm, just, I'm gonna go, can you move? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In order for me to do that with enough power to lop something off, I was so exposed because you can't stop that kind of movement in the middle of it. Whereas in cut like this, I can stop there and come back, and that's enough power for me to get the job done. Or you could even, yeah. like, if we were really fighting, yes, and I decided to try and cut to you, like in the head. Yeah. What I am envisioning is ending my cut maybe like an inch into your head. Yes. Just to make sure it's hard enough to like hurt him and make him bleed and maybe make him stop fighting. But that's gonna be where my cut is gonna go and I'm gonna stop it there no matter what, just because. So I'm, I'm not gonna actually hit him, but like that might look like that. Yeah. You know? And then if I do it like this and he does some kind of defensive action or steps back, I'm I'm in a great spot. Yeah. I can just, you know, whereas, whereas if he does his cut as if he was going to bisect my entire body, and I step back, he's slowed very down. open. Yeah, he slowed down for my sake. Yeah. But you're just so open when you overpower these attacks. Well, I mean, when we're doing this, I know some of you might be thinking, well, when we're doing this, we're stopping and talking. It's yeah. because we're making a video. We're making yes. a video. If I missed him with a big stupid cut, I've done this enough that I might be able to get back quickly yes. and realize I was being an idiot, so I might miss and then be able to be like this. Yeah. Or but, but but it's still not smart. It's but, just not smart. And, and you're very open and it's very obvious where you're going to cut to. No, of course. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, during actual sword fights between people, maybe two people hated each other and they wanted to cleave each other open. Yes. But, 
That doesn't then, mean it's better fighting, it just again, means that they're pissed off at each other. Whenever we say these things, like, yeah. this is the general idea, yeah. does that mean that it didn't happen? Absolutely, people cut body parts off. One. There were fights where people lopped things off, they overpowered their attacks, and it worked. The question is, does it work consistently, sure. and is it your best strategy? And in our opinion, uh, no. And if you're, if you're learning to use a long sword in the medieval period, and you have time to practice cutting with it at, at home or whatever they had used for targets, you might try practicing cutting really hard just mm -hmm. in case you need to or you want to or just to understand how it works. Because we could be two guys fighting each other and it's not a friendly duel. Maybe I hate him and I do get some kind of like disabling cut yeah. on him and then I hit him again yeah, and, and again. he falls yeah, down. Yeah, yeah. And maybe if I feel like there's just no wanna... threat and I want to end him yeah. because he killed my I killed your something. family. I might go ahead and just yeah. be like, you know what? Boom. But but I'm not doing it as like a the, the attack. Initial it's, attack. It's, it's the, a the, idea, the idea of using an overpowered cut to look, disembowel. Well, disembowel is a little bit yeah. easier. That, that's soft. But to, to lop off a head or lop off an arm or a limb or something with an attack against an opponent who still has all their faculties together and is you know halfway decent, it's, it's kind of asking to get hit. Right. Um, has it worked? Absolutely it has worked, I mean, but it, it's not something that um, that we just, it's not something that I would recommend if I was fencing. I also just realized we said something about armor and I don't want people to have the impression that you should cut really hard. No. You it shouldn't cut armor. someone wearing armor basically. Yeah, I mean this is, this <laughs> is mean, nearly, I wouldn't say useless, but it's, um, the, you have to change the fighting so much with the longsword when you're fighting somebody in full armor, it essentially becomes a wrestling match, right? So if he's in full plate armor, and I was in full plate armor, we would not be cutting like this. We'd be trying to jockey from position to find weak points in the armor to get up and in, or to use the other side of it to bash open the helmet and things like that, or we'd be wrestling the other person to the ground in order to pin them. And then if I did wrestle, yeah, you and then you, yeah, you know, try and get in there with a dagger or something and that and the reason for that is that this is less rigid at the full the full um mm -hmm. here you go it's it's less rigid there but at the very tip if i've reinforced it here i've made it a lot more rigid and i have a lot more fine control here than i do away in the back so again like armor combat is totally different and we really don't handle that much on this channel just because no. i don't personally have resources to buy two sets of armor to do it in if you're going to be somebody who studies hemo at wanting to do plate armor fighting, you know, getting the armor that's actually the proper thickness and quality costs a lot of money. And I mean, people, that stuff can hurt if you there's, if you I, fall down in armor. There is a group. There is a group hurt. somewhat nearby. Um, yeah. yeah, there's a. There's they're a, good. They know what they're yeah, doing. Yeah, there's another. There's another. There's another. They don't do this. Yeah, no, you don't attack like that. Uh, with full armor combat, it, it just isn't very effective. So, like I said, what we're doing not is with sword. no, 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 not with, with, sword. with, with, a, with a giant hammer, claw, maybe, yeah. like club or a pole arm yeah. or an axe. Which, a by pike. the way, I would think an armored knight would probably have one of those. Oh yeah, and this would be here, but it would be for like some somebody broke my pole armor. I dropped it and I can't pick it up. And or now I've got this or last you know, thing. or you know, like I'm fighting an unarmored opponent in my sure. armor because it's not like. I don't think the norm was for knights to go to I duels in full armor. It know. would be on the battlefield where you're like, aha, yes, the peasants, <laughs> the peasants from the enemy's army, haha, look at me, I'm rich and I can afford armor. But I don't know that I'd pull my sword out for that either because <laughs> a pole arm would work really well against them. Yeah. What do they have? A, anything a gets stick, through, anything that gets through my armor. Well, a spear, a spear, a spear might. Yeah. But honestly, chainmail, even, even chainmail, chain good. Real, if your life depended on it, they knew how to rivet the chain links together to where it, I've, I've handled it and seen it. And I think that even with a good sword tip, you would have to do some work do some to work, get yeah. through. So the, the basic takeaway from, from all of this is that the overpowered cut is more of a risk to you than it is a, a viable tactic for someone who is armed and ready to fight you. Um, and the the controlled cut using leverage and movement and footwork is a much more useful attack because it's faster and we don't need to like dead is dead, you know, disabled is disabled. It, you don't get extra points by chopping the arm off. Another thing is like I, I feel like maybe there's unconscious influence from like 
video game line. Yeah, I think so. Stamina bars, that yeah, kind yeah, of yeah. thing. Like, Light attack, heavy do, attack. Do a medium sized cut into my parry. Into your parry? Yeah. Like, do it again. Like, I'm fine. I, I, I'm not getting exhausted from doing that. I'm not gonna, he's not gonna be able to be like, wow, I'll just do a bunch of hard R2 attacks and eventually he'll go like this. It's, it doesn't work. Like, no. somebody can parry you all day. All day long. If they're taking the parry in the yeah. right spot. They, yeah. I mean, and if they've got good distance, yeah, if they've got yeah. good um, distance control. You're not gonna blow, no. you might blow through a parry, you but might. that shouldn't be your goal. I mean, that, Yeah, no, I mean like, there is techniques to get a parry out of the way. Like if he's got his sword there, I could do a beat into something else possibly. Yeah. But he can counter. I mean, there's always a counter. There's always a counter. Yeah, but that wasn't that wasn't you going. No, 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 no. That and, wasn't and you trying was, to do something. And if like, I was, look, I mean, like if I'm here and you see that, are you gonna are you gonna wait? I'm gonna honestly. If he did it when we were actually sparring and not trying to show something specific. I would honestly think he was goofing around. Yeah. <laughs> I'd be like, what's he gonna do? Uh, he trying to make a funny joke? Or... That said, <laughs> let's take a look at it in fencing. Okay, so I'm gonna be doing control attacks and Matt is gonna be doing open top attacks. It's gonna be hard to get myself to do yeah. silly attacks. Silly attacks. Are right, you ready? Yeah. Fence. That was pretty easy. Got me in the backswing a bit, but not before I stab. So, me. just so everyone knows, what I'm trying to do is basically cut as fast as I can to somewhere down here because I feel like that is a, something that someone would try. Yeah, I if mean, if they thought heavy cuts would work. Yeah, so he's using as much speed as he can to make a heavy cut from like a gun tag position. Well, because if I try to do a heavy cut from any other position, I kind of, I have to do yeah, it. Yeah, you have anyway. to go backwards. Uh, and, fence. That I'm just, yeah. I'm just finding it's, it's really easy to be able to dodge. Like, actually, uh, use footwork to try and uh, come in. That's the one thing I can think of. What do you mean? Uh, like, gain, gain distance on me? I don't know. Get close? Uh, you know, no, just keep doing what you're doing. Well, no, I mean, I think I know what you mean, but yeah. if I get this, if I yeah, get close, it won't work. then it's hard to get big cuts. Because uh -huh. I'm going to pull my arms in. Okay, let's just keep going. Ready? Yeah. Fence. I might change it up, actually. Yeah, try try something. Well, I mean, I'll fence like a normal person. Okay, fence like a normal person. And every once in a while, I'll just... Instead of doing a full retreat. Mm -hmm. I did. Yeah, so another thing, leaning can be instinctual, but the problem with leaning is unless you yeah. do this, you have to come back. Was that a big cut or was it just a... It was kind of a big one. Kind of a big one? Yeah. It was bigger than I would normally do. Okay. So for that one, he went to do a big cut, but it was easy to track the trajectory. Before this, I've been dodging his big cut. That was a huge spark. <laughs> you might even see it in the video. Nice. Before this, I've just been dodging his cuts because they're so big. For this one, I specifically decided not to dodge, and because this cut was so massive, I could easily pick the trajectory, block it, and keep going. Yeah, and I... It would normally be possible with a more controlled cut to change the trajectory. Not even just change the trajectory, but if I do a more reasonable cut, do that. Yeah, I might be able to like retreat, get in there or something. Um, so with the with the controlled cut, I can even change trajectory on the fly. But that's using this framework. With this cut, I, I kind. I mean, I. You I'm gonna, can. I'm gonna actually cut. Just get out of the way. Okay. So this is a real cut. A big cut. Right? I'm gonna try and change trajectory. It, it's, I feel like I might have felt a little bit of it. I don't know, maybe <laughs> it's just hard to, it's hard to change trajectory when you put that much, or even to stop it. So Whereas the, this cut, I can easily show twists. My thing on that is, 
a big cut has so much inertia. Yeah. If you try to change trajectory with your hands, you could end up going flat because the mass of everything is going this way. And if you try and twist your hands around, yeah, you just flat it off. Yeah. So okay, let's keep going. Uh, I'll switch to big cuts. Okay. And you switch to small cuts. Okay. So easy to block, wasn't it? Yeah, and that's another thing people need to understand is like. That was a big cut. I didn't pull that. He just I got it, it on a good spot and I barely felt it. Yeah. It took no, I didn't have to have like muscles to be like. That, if that had hit him, it would have probably broken some bones and gone deep, but it was so easy to block. Yeah. Yeah, all right. Ah, I started using your offensive. <laughs> <laughs> ah, he, he actually, he did a free to fair. Uh, I don't think he knew he did it. But he blocked. I was trying to. Okay. You blocked in such a way where you hit my hand. Yeah, yeah, I was sort of, what I was trying to do there, and I actually was sort of meaning to sort of do like this. Yeah. But I really like when someone's doing something big and easy to predict, it's a good opportunity to do some of the cool stuff where you're like, you know, yeah, or yeah. whatever it is. I honestly think a lot of the techniques that are in the, um, the, the hey, fight books, yeah. these master cuts, they show like, um, like these uh, Zorn Howe, or uh, some of these other like Crumb Howe, where uh, I cut to the hands, they're designed to be used against an opponent who's doing these giant cuts. Because some of them work on controlled cuts, but a lot of the times if your opponent is using this really controlled, fast stuff, you just, don't, do. you yeah. just don't have the time to do them a lot of the time. It, it's very hard to pull off some of these, these master cuts against an opponent who is really fencing um, uh, you know, with control and uh, precision. With, with, with some self-preservation in mind. Yes, yeah. and, and so another thing to, to, to note about that is that the average person with a sword might not have had training. So you might very well, and can, now again, basic training. Basic training. I mean, you can teach anyone yeah. to go like this, yeah, yeah, yeah. like yeah. This, this. Swords, swords are expensive, so yes, um, to own one you would have to be a little bit wealthy, you might have some training. Um, but there's different levels of swords, so a crude sword you might have been able to get a hold of if you're a little bit less uh, wealthy. That said, if you don't have a lot of experience, this might seem like a great idea to you, and if that's coming at you, and I know it's coming at me, just go ahead, I can... Well, you do this. I can... I, I have trouble... Yeah, I have... Me. But I have trouble getting myself to do such dumb cuts. Okay, go ahead and try it again. But I'll pretend so, like yeah. I think it's gonna work. So he's gonna do that. I was able to see the incoming cut, block, and hit him at the same time. Which let, me, one... let me try with a little more speed. Okay. Still able to do it. Yeah, I mean, I really, I really tried to get myself into a headspace where I was convinced I was gonna smash your head over. And so with that, like. If I if I am fencing someone who is very inexperienced and I know they're throwing these big cuts, it actually is a huge advantage to me because I can pull out some of the other stuff. I find it very difficult when I'm fencing that normally and using these controlled cuts to pull off some of these fancy master cuts just because it kind of relies on your opponent not being able to fence quite as well as you. Which isn't well, it's not necessarily true, but in my experience, that's what I've I've found. Is that a lot of, like Zorn how like that when it's the pre de fair cut to the head or crump how where it's hitting the hand as you go by it kind of relies on big attacks coming at you it's not going to work quite as well against yeah, these control attacks. That's a good point. I mean, I don't, I don't, I could ramble for a long time about why these people made these manuals and who they were for and whether or not they were even right, but it's all we've got. So, but I don't get the sense that people who were making manuals were making them as like ways for people to fight each other. Like, bo like both participants would be using that yeah, stuff against would, each other. Yeah, that makes sense. A, like, lot of the, a lot of the drawings and the things that they talk about in, 
it, at least I think in Fiore, if I'm correct, I, I haven't read it in a while, I've only read parts of it, but um, a lot of it seems to be ways to deal with someone who's throwing a very typical, typical type of thing. Yeah. And so, I mean, and, and that makes sense. Like, it's a specialty training to work against someone who doesn't have that specialty training. Um, and that's not 100% the case. But it, it's a, uh, the, these cuts become easier against somebody who's just lobbing an attack at you, trying to butcher you, cut you in half. So, um, let's do a little more of this. Uh, why don't we, who wants to be big, stupid attacks? You. Okay, I'll be big, stupid attacks. <laughs> big, stupid attacks, here we go. Now when I say stupid, I am trying to hit him. I'm just making them very overpowered. I am not not trying to hit him. All right, ready? Yeah. That was so hard. Yeah, when all I had to do was get it there. That actually hurt my hands to do. Yeah, and I didn't, I just went like this. And I actually wasn't totally ready for it. If I had been closer, I could have. Yeah. Ah, uh, I still got your hand there. Yeah, he, yeah. he got my fingers that time because I, I tried to do a retreat, but I I left my hand sticking out there. <laughs> yeah, I got my hand. <laughs> as soon as I made that big overpowered attack, he easily parried it. And I was so far forward and committed to it that he was easily able to just come back at me. Um, well, you weren't expecting it, but no. there were things you could have done. No, I could have done something. I probably, if I had been a little bit more balanced and if I had been thinking about it, there's there's always something I could do. Sure, anytime distance closes, it's a good idea. Yeah. Hold your sword up. It's a great idea to try and manage the other person's yeah. weapon hand. We don't do that a whole lot uh, when we fight just because it's... Well, because... I mean, the main thing is, if we close in, yeah. and I guess even this, yeah. try and do some. Well, I mean, with the sword. Yeah, I can't do much. I pretty much can do what I want. Yeah, to. yeah. All right, let's do some real fence. Uh, not real. Let's do some more controlled fence. Where we're both controlled. We're both controlled. Okay. So what I did was I showed here and I fainted. I did that with control. So I showed here and then I was able to cut this leverage. Was it hard enough to stop you? It was here, yeah. and I think it probably would have damaged my wrist enough that I would have had trouble holding this. And then I was able to roll over to this cut. Yeah. Alright, let's keep going. Okay. A couple more on the stop. Sure. Uh, slip out of my hand. I don't think it hit the point though. It's hard to say. Ooh. You all right? Was that the cross guard? What? I hit you something. I didn't feel anything. Okay, over. cross guard. You got me a different shoulder. I felt something touch my thumb, but I think it was the edge after something. That... I think I hit the cross guard and then slid by. Yeah. Okay. I didn't feel a cut or poke on my thumb, but I felt like a drag. Uh, but I'm not getting on the first one? Maybe. Okay. You got my wrist. I well. barely felt it. Which, it's hard for us to gauge how hard these are sometimes because yeah, these are really heavy duty gauntlets. Which I, again, it's a, it's a necessary for me sacrifice. I don't want broken fingers anymore, not on the old days. Yeah, I mean, a, even a medium strength cut on a finger joint can leave your finger hurting for weeks. Back when we used to, when we didn't have these gloves, we didn't have With swords that were as sword. heavy as this even. Yeah. And, and I, I definitely fractured a finger at one point yeah. for a normal cut. We were a lot more timid back then too. Yeah. Because we didn't have the gear. Yeah, it doesn't take much. Um, you don't even need a sharp edge. No. It did. It wasn't enough to make either of us stop fencing. No. But it hurt. It hurt. <laughs> mm, the yeah. point kind of got there, but I think you might have been pulling back. With it. So this is all very controlled fencing, and you'll notice that our cuts are smaller, but they're still doing enough. They're hitting these. We're are aiming for vital joints. And things like that, and and thrusts, a lot of thrusts. And thrusting it's just, is better, I think. Thrusting is better. Well, <laughs> thrusting is more effective if you can make it work. 
Well, it depends on what the context is. Yeah. If you find yourself in a situation where you're in a bind and cuts a good thing to do, do it. I always. But like as far as opening, yes, I like opening with. Thrust. I always like to start with my weapon out in a thrusting position because no matter what, he has to deal with this first. Yeah. Even even if so, I have a lot of options from here. Even if he touches my sword, if he tries to cut at me anywhere. I've got this in the way first, and I've also got a block I can make. Right, and if I he can does try, try and cut, I can try beating it, and I can, I can move it. So if he sees me trying to beat his sword to the side, he could disengage out yeah. of the beast. Um, if, if we're like this, and I get an idea to, I'm going to show you what my ideal thing to do would be, yeah. so just let me do it. What a, My plan might be something like this, mm -hmm. right? A nice take on his weak with my strong and my thrust. If I go to execute it, and he feels pressure, he can disengage. Disengage and come Or right. you can turn it into a counter thrust. I could. You can, yeah, you can do that. I can come over there. So a lot of options from the point, not saying it's better, but I like to start from the point. Well, it's it hurts a lot. It does. It's fast. It's also deadly. I mean, the thrust is definitely going to go. It takes a lot less energy. It does. Because not only, the, the thrust is going to go deeper just because of, you know, the, the architecture of the blade. Also, There's generally, if I'm, if I'm doing a thrust, either my body weight's going into it or his body weight's going into it. With a cut, I have the leverage and I have the weight of the sword yep. and I have the weight of my body to an extent, but this is basically one-to-one. -one. Whatever I put forward, all of that weight goes to the tip and it's going to go right through Another my weird thing that I just realized in most cases, aside from maybe ribs, yeah, there's not really such a thing as proper point alignment. Yeah, this stabs, this stabs. stabs it all now, this stabs. one might go through ribs better, maybe. Maybe after a certain thickness. Certain, yeah, yeah, yeah. But edge alignment is a the, huge thing. Like cutting with a sword, you can find plenty of videos of idiots with machetes and stuff thinking that it's easy because it's just a big sharp thing. How hard can it be? You just swing it. Well, you have to hit with the right portion of the blade yeah. for a good cut. Your edge alignment has to be really good. There has to be maybe a little bit of follow through maybe. with a real situation. Not that I, I don't fight with sharks, but yeah. you know. It's, it's um, not as easy as just swing the thing at the other guy. Whereas that, a thrust. Yeah, so well, I think it was um, Jon Snow, right? Stabbed with a pointy end. It's, it really is yeah. that simple. It's, it's boop. I don't like Arya's sword though. <laughs> no, I love the fact that the because her sword in it's Game of Thrones is a, a small sword, but it's missing but they, something very important. The, the loop on the guard is oh. just this open loop. Yeah, it's not a sense. it's not well, an actual it, guard. Doesn't she also cut with it weirdly? It's like a spit. No, I saw the Matt Easton video where he was trying to pick that fight apart and okay. point out that she was cutting. I don't think she thought she was cutting. Okay. I think what happened was she was fighting Brienne. I think I haven't seen it. And they they were just sparring. Okay. Fight. Well, <laughs> she she like smacked her on the wrist really hard. Okay. Okay. Which actually that would hurt. I have been bumped with small swords made of steel on like the angle yeah, or the wrist. It's not fun. Um, it wouldn't make me die, but it could stun me for a yeah. split second. It hurts. <laughs> so um, this is just kind of our take on uh, the notion of the death blow with the sword lopping off a head or an arm. Could it happen? Yeah, you could come with the sword that hard, but it's mostly video game movie stuff. A controlled cut with the sword is just a much more versatile um, technique. You have more options. It's more likely that you're going to be able to protect yourself. You're not going to leave yourself quite as open. And remember, there's no need to overdo it. Dead is dead. Disabled is disabled. You don't get extra points if the arm goes flying across the room. No, and I also, you said something way back in the previous video we did today about uh, competition cutting. Yeah. I like the idea of, I've met HEMA people who, believe it or not, don't think you should test cut because it doesn't show proper form or it's not realistic or something. Okay. My, it's not though because you're never going to use a sharp one for real. You need to have a... You can learn a lot. Wait, what do you mean it's not... What was the question? Like, they basically said that test cutting on targets was kind of silly because people usually cut really ugly when they do it. And my response to that is, well, then don't do it like that. And yeah. also, you need to know what it feels like to cut with this thing that you yeah. are studying. Yeah, because it's Even if it's just a target, you can learn a lot about the way you hold it. If you go to make what you feel like is a good cut, but it ends up just going wrong and wow. doing weird stuff. Um, you brought up a thing a while back about what you right. think would be a good type of right. test. This is an interesting idea. Go ahead and talk. Yeah, about so it. I've watched, I'm, I'm not huge into HEMA, but I do like watching stuff on YouTube about it. 
I watched a test cutting uh, competition. It was a cutting competition at one of the huge HEMA events. And the first event was seeing who could cut the deepest vertically through like three tatami mats. Yeah. And a bunch of them were doing like this. Um, it's a weird stance. And I thought, like, what's the, what are you? It's not applicable to. What are you training? How is yeah, that? Yeah. Useful? Are you going to stand in a fight and cut someone in, in half? Some like of the this? other tests were a little bit better where you had to cut like this and then cut again the same way and like shave off small yeah, portions. Yeah. But my feeling is I would really love to see something where there's like three reed mats rolled up next to each other and the task is to cut through the first one but not damage the second one. Things like that. Or, yeah, controlled cutting. Or maybe so somebody comes up just beforehand so you don't even know what it's going to be and they take black ink and they draw like a diagonal here and here and here. And that's what you have to do yeah. is those specific things. And maybe they could even require people to do like an advance yeah. while well, they're doing it. it. You know, so no, I like that because like we said, this overpowering your cut isn't necessarily good. Being able to cut to a certain depth or to a certain power level on an opponent knowing that, yeah, that's gonna get the job done and still is gonna leave me with enough time and energy and everything else to uh, to do the next thing and oh and cutting that powerfully does take a lot of energy it, yeah, it can you wear you out yeah, it whereas can. this it it's not nearly as hard and it delivers in my opinion a better result so that's kind of our take on the overpowered cut and this notion of like lopping off body parts but again this is just our opinion and um i never would profess to be a master at this no. i've been doing it for a long time and i think that my opinions are pretty good but uh you know there you go that's that's our take on it thank you but there is one thing that you should totally decapitate, and it's the like button. Go ahead and bisect it with your sword. What should they do with the subscribe button? Thrust it! Thrust it! Yeah! <laughs> if you enjoy our content, please consider joining our YouTube memberships or supporting us on Patreon.